Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are and whatever you're doing. I hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's episode of The Things You Missed in Elden Ring, we're going to be wrapping up the outskirts of Landell. So, picking up from where we left off last time, we're going to start heading towards this minor Erd tree. However, along the way, as we're following this eastern road and clearing up the few wandering nobles here, we're going to be faced with not one, not two, but three stone golems. Two of them have weak points on their ankles and are wielding bows, so they will go down without too much problem. Problem. And then the third one only has weak points on his arms and chest, which, because of the size of him, aren't very accessible. So he's going to be a bit more of a problem. And after a very long, tough, grueling fight with this boy, he'll finally go down and reward us with a couple of thousand runes and nothing else. Now, we didn't really need to kill them stone golems. They didn't reward us with many runes, and I believe they respawn. But I just adore this game so much that I love every opportunity to challenge myself and fight yet another big bad enemy because the combat feels so fun and I just revel in the feeling of challenge that this game gives me. So now they're all dead we'll head to the minor Erd tree, clear up all the enemies around here including the ogre and once he's dead you can then go and loot the twiggy cracked tear and the crimson a little crimson 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 and the crimson crystal tear. You should now have two halves of the crimson crystal tear which means if you apply both of them to the same mixed physic it will put you on full health and the twiggy cracked tear will briefly stop rune loss on death so if you time it very well using your physic you basically now have a way to permanently safeguard your runes i was going to say your souls then which is amazing now that we've cleared up them few bits let's move on to the next area I'm just going to take a couple of seconds to open up the map and talk you through a couple of things I'm not going to be doing and why. So pretty much directly south from where I am right now to the left hand side of this lake here. If you haven't murdered him like I accidentally did, the boiled prawn guy will be here selling you more boiled prawns. Uh, Blackguard, I believe his name is. So you can go and talk to him, exhaust any dialogue that he's got and buy some items from him. And then just to the right of him, actually in the lake itself, is where the dung eater will invade you later on in the game. Now you won't have access to this invasion until you've progressed further through his quest line and you can't do that until you get to the subterranean shunning grounds underneath the royal capital and that will be coming up in a video in the next week or so. So I'll bring you back here and talk you through his quest line then. Now there's nothing else around this part of the outskirts. This is all just barren grasslands. So I'm going to set a marker right outside the capital here and we're going to head there right now. We can grab this smithing stone five on the way but there's nothing else of note i'm just going to activate this summoning sign here not that i'm going to use it and now we'll be faced with the draconic tree sentinel I firstly try to fight this guy on horseback and for the most part it's actually going really well but then when he's on about a quarter health maybe even less than that he does a wombo combo on me just knocks me to the floor and before I even have the chance to get up boom fucking one shot so I'm gonna res grab my souls and try again on foot I'm doing significantly more damage this time he is going down way quicker however I get greedy and he takes me down again with that stun slam wombo combo what a load of bullshit. Third attempt, I just lose focus and let him obliterate me with a fireball. But now, on the fourth attempt, I've got you now, you bastard. I'm coming for you, boy. And now that I've learned his moveset and I dodge that absolutely bullshit one-shot attack that he's got, we take him down no problem at all. GG. And you'll be rewarded with the Dragon Great Claw and the Dragon Claw Shield. Now you can go along this bridge towards the royal capital and this will open up the entrance to the capital which I have already covered in another video. So now that you've got that sight of grace you can head through the doorways and if you didn't check it out already because you were waiting for us to get to it during the playthrough now is the time to head on over and check out the Landell royal capital things you missed video and then once you've done that I'll meet you back here again for the next tip. Alrighty, I'm just going to mark two spots on the map here, and this is a tomb and a grave that we're going to go and visit for the last two tips for the video. And then I see a spirit spring down here, and I try and be very clever. I'm thinking, oh, we need to get down there. And spirit springs allow you to jump up and down without taking any full damage. So let's... Uh, and I'm dead. Okay, 
I guess we're going to have to loop down and run down the mountain the old-fashioned way. There we go. Now we can hop down the spirit spring. And as we get down here, you'll see a couple of lesser room bears you can take out, no problem at all. And a statue that we need to break. So we're going to run further north, aggro the rune bear, bring him back to the statue and get him to smash that to smithereens for us. And then once you've dealt with the rune bear himself, we'll head back towards this statue and we will be rewarded with two smithing stone sixes. Nice. Now head north and open the entrance to this cave, and you'll be inside the Orisa side tomb. Orisa? Orisa? It's, it's got a Z. It's got a Z, but I feel like it's Orisa. Prepare yourself, and then we shall continue onward into the depths. Okie dokie. The gimmick for this tomb is that it is just riddled with teleporter chests. Through 50% luck, 20% skill, 15% concentrated power of will, 50% kind of knowing what I'm doing, I managed to take the correct portal pretty much every single time, first time. And it's a very easy dungeon to get lost in because there are three levels of the dungeon that all look identical. So it's super easy to forget where you are or teleport to the wrong place. So I'll do my best to take you through this slowly and show you exactly where you need to go for every step of this cave. First room, very straightforward. Take out the jars, just be careful because a few of them explode and then you can grab the glove wart in the room. Now you want to head down the stairs and take the chest in front of you. This will just teleport you below where you were. Now come down these stairs and swing round. You'll be ambushed by an imp and then you can grab a Grave Glove Wart 6. Take out the other imps in this room. Grab the Grave Glove Wart as you're heading down into the slightly flooded room. And then as you come into this next area, you'll be ambushed by another imp. And then there's another one further at the end of the room by this chest. Take them out and then jump in this chest. You'll now be teleported to the other section of the flooded room with two giant living jars in. Be super careful taking them both out. Then you can get the Perfumer's Cookbook 3 and two cracked pots from either side of the room. Now jump back in the chest that brought you here, and this time you want to turn right and smash through the illusionary wall here. As you come down into this room, you'll be ambushed by two explodey pots. Run away and let them explode themselves, and then we'll jump in the chest. This will bring you up onto a ledge that appears to be just above where you just were, but this is what I was talking about. We're now actually in a different area of the dungeon. It gets so confusing at this point. So now you can take out the imp, grab the golden rune seven, and then take out the other imp on the next balcony. Come in into this room and be careful because there is an imp right over on the other side but then you'll be ambushed by another one behind you if you didn't take him out before now you can drop down and this is where you'll see we're actually in a different area now because you can run behind the stairs and as you'll know we already killed the imp that ambushed us behind the stairs and we grabbed the grave glove wart as well but there's another one there because we're actually in a different level of the tomb so take out that imp and grab the grave glove wart six now head up the stairs and go seemingly back towards the entrance to the dungeon, but there's a different room we've never seen before. There'll be an explodey jar on the right-hand side ready to ambush you, so be careful taking him out. And then once you kill the giant living jar, you can get a ritual pot and some root resin. Now run back the way you came, all the way down both flights of stairs, and then when you get to the room with all the benches, take a left, run down these stairs, and jump in this chest here. Nope, nope, back up, that's not what I did. <laughs> Fuck me, this is confusing. I've done it and still keep getting lost. And then once you're back in the room with all the benches, run to the end of the room and jump in that chest. In here, there's a couple of explodey jars and you can also loot some cracked pots and some ghost glove wart six. Now you're probably thinking, well, we've already been in this room. There was two giant living jars. Again, this is what I mean. This is a different version on a different floor and there's a ladder. So we'll head up the ladder, grab the glove wart, and finally, we have now found the lever that opens the boss room. After pulling this lever, I was a dum-dum and started running down the stairs. You don't want to do that. Ignore where I've just gone. I'm going to skip the footage forward a bit for you here. And when I get back to this lever, you'll see I actually go the correct way this time. So now we're back here. The lever's in front of us. Jump down and head up the stairs. You'll see a teleporter chest where the giant living jar was. Jump in here and it will teleport you back to the first level of the dungeon. You can now just keep running forwards and you'll be back at the start of the dungeon and hey ho there is the doors into the boss room you'll be faced with a grave warden duelist and a load of living jars and once you take them all out you'll be rewarded with a sold jars of fortune ashes i love the pun and we're done congratulations god that is a confusing dungeon but believe it or not it's not the most confusing dungeon we're going to be visiting in this video so i'll join you in the final tip and we'll go through an even more confusing area 
And now, once you're back at the start of this tomb, head south and go to the other marker that I put on my map a while ago. Jump down the lift, or ideally just use the lift. If you jump down it, you may die. And at the bottom, you'll now be in the Orissa Hero's Grave. Light the grace, light the summoning pool, and then straight away, you can use a couple of stone sword keys to get in this room here. And watch me be murderized by some basilisks because I forgot to press triangle to get the bloody message off the screen so I wasn't able to swing my sword. <laughs> Fuck. So we'll go back in, deal with the basilisks, and grab the golden epitaph, which is a very cool sword. How awesome does that look? Its ashes of war is really cool as well because it grants the sacred order incantation on you and your allies. And because it's a holy weapon, if you use it to kill skeleton... If you use it to kill skeletons, if you use it to kill skeletons, they stay dead. All right, we'll head on down and into the dungeon itself. Straight away, when you come into this room, sprint for your life down the slope and head either left or right into a little cubby hole because the chariot will spawn and start running at you. Then once it's gone past, you can run to the bottom, grab the fan daggers from this corpse here and jump off. There'll be a grave glove wart you can loot, but a load of basilisks will spawn, so be careful taking them out. You'll have to clear out even more in the next room before you can then loot some ghost glove wart. Another one will ambush you from the right hand side just here, where you can grab yet another grave glove wart. And now just here, as you're coming out of this hole where you can see a grave violet in front of you, be very careful because two chariots are going to be patrolling up and down and their hitbox is ass. So once one of them has gone past, you can scooch in the middle here and grab yourself a stone sword key and some more glove wart. And now slalom down the room in between the two of them. If you time their patrol paths well, you should be able to dodge them both. Once you get to the bottom, another one will spawn in front of you. But if you stand right where I am by the pillar here, you will be safe. And then you can really quickly grab a golden rune seven off of this corpse. And you can use this corpse as a marker. You now want to stand exactly where the corpse is and walk forwards. And you'll drop onto a wooden plank below. Be very careful as you're running down these planks. You can grab some holy grease and then keep going towards the north end of the room and come into this room here with a load of basilisks. A load of basilisks. Like eight basilisks. Eventually, once you've got rid of them all, you can get the vulgar militia ashes and yet another glove wart. Now you want to head up this ladder and you'll be on top of one of the chariots that we were facing earlier. If you time your movements very well, just watch what I'm doing here. You can dodge it and run past it to get straight to the boss room for this area. We have missed a whole chunk of this dungeon. We will come back and we're actually going to kill the chariots and they drop some awesome loot. But as we're here, I'm going to get the boss done now. One of the hardest bosses in the entire game because it's a Crucible Knight duo. So I'm going to summon my plus 10 Banished Knight Oleg to help me out. And I'm still going to have a hard bloody time in this fight. They are challenging. Really tough. So seriously good luck with this fight. And when you do manage to take out both the Crucible Knight and the Crucible Knight Ordovice, you will be granted with Ordovice's Greatsword and the Crucible Axe armor set, which oh, looks so cool. Oh my God, look at it, it's so awesome. Alrighty, from here, wiggle your way back out around the chariot again and drop down by the corpse onto the platforms below. This time, take the south exit, head up this ladder here, and then when you come out into the room with this chariot, wait for him to go past you down the ramp, and then very quickly sprint up and into the room on the right. At this point, you can smack the statue to move it up. There's now a few ways to tackle the rest of the dungeon. I did it really arse about face and ended up fucking it up like four or five times so before you go anywhere now that you've raised this pillar what i advise doing is actually using the is it i believe it's called the mimic grace the item that makes you lose all your souls but teleport back to the last site of grace that you rested at obviously you're going to begrudge doing this if you do have loads of souls on you but it's the easiest way to get rid of all these chariots now because what you need to do is go back to the first area with the two chariots that were patrolling in tandem. And once you're there, you'll see that this pillar has spawned in a third chariot that will crash into them all and kill them all. That won't happen until you physically witness the event. And you'll be rewarded with the Ash of War, Holy Ground and the Tree Sentinel armor set. And then once they're dead, we can now go through and finish exploring the dungeon at our leisure. Alternatively, there is an even easier way to do this. As soon as you've 
you've reached one of the safe spots in the wide ramp with the two chariots that I was just talking about, if you have either Margit's shash Shashel, if you have either Margit's Shackle or Moog's Shackle, the range of these items will pass through walls. Their range is massive, and they will actually cause the pillar to be raised from your current location. So you can just use that. It will raise the pillar for you. You can stand there and watch the third chariot spawn in and obliterate them all. I don't think that's been patched out. I don't think it will be patched out. I think that is an intended use. I hope it's an intended use because it's very cool, and it makes the rest of this dungeon trivial. So ignore everything I just talked about for the last last few minutes if you've got Margit Shackle or Moog Shackle you can just use them job done so the next thing you want to do from the room with the fire breathing pillar come back out and avoiding the chariot as you go down hiding in the cubby holes run all the way down the bottom to the south and if you go towards the right you can take a lift up at the top of this lift right at the other end of the hallway you can grab three great dragonfly heads and a grave glove wart six just around the corner, you'll find two skeletons you can take out. Once they're dead, go directly in front of you, directly east, and you'll come to an ogre that you can take out, and then you can loot the Crucible Feather Talisman. Now that you've done that, you can go ahead and clear the rest of the dungeon, and once you've got everything you need from here, run away and never, ever come back. Run away and never return. God, I hated this one so much. <laughs> That's it, we've now completely finished the outskirts of Lanedale, the royal capital. As mentioned previously, the video for Lanedale itself is already up, so go and watch it if you haven't already. Also, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you enjoy this content. Thank you so, so much for doing so. I hope you have an absolutely amazing day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.